All right, welcome. This is Big Picture Anatomy with Larry Froelich. Today we're looking at what I call the two oval skull. This is a way of understanding the skull as a framework to putting the entire anatomy of the head together. And we're taking a look at a very simple cartoon-like view, a sagittal view of the skull, and I call it the two oval skull because we start out with a look at the brain inside the skull represented by two ovals, a big oval representing the cerebrum and a smaller oval representing the cerebellum as seen from the side in sagittal view. We then add on to this the neurocranium, which are those flat plate-like bones that form the, form the entire rounded dome-like part of your skull. That would include the frontal bone at the front or anteriorly, the parietal bones covering much of the top and side parts of the skull, and then that occipital bone down at the posterior base of the skull. We also, those are easy to understand. We also have the face, bones of the face hanging off the front of the neurocranium. And again, you can get those details by looking at an image of that at the inferior, most of the face is formed by the maxil maxilla or maxillary bone, which at the inferior part bears the upper teeth. We then, have the mandible, which is the only movable part of the skull forming a good synovial joint hanging below the face and obviously bearing or holding the lower teeth. A key land, finally, we've got what we call the throat skeleton, which consists of the hyoid bone. It does not articulate with any of the rest of the skull. It's a sort of half, half moon or horse, horse shoe shaped bone just inferior and posterior to the mandible, and then hanging below the hyoid bone, the two cartilages that form the, the larynx. So there you can see a little closer up, the hyoid bone hanging just below the mandible, the two cartilages forming the larynx, the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage at the superior part of the trachea as indicated here by the tracheal rings. Notice that if we follow the upper teeth directly posteriorly, we arrive to that external auditory opening or external acoustic meatus, which in life is covered over by the eardrum. Over here, I've expanded that out so we can take a closer look at it. And this is where we can see those middle ear ossicles, which are located directly behind the external auditory opening or covered over in life by the eardrum. They're the three tiniest bones in the body that form a little chain carrying vibrations of the eardrum through the middle ear cavity to the inner ear, where those vibrations are then um, picked up by the cochlea and turned into sound information that our brain can interpret. So those three middle ear ossicles are the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. If we look back at the entire skull, then what we can see is that the really difficult part of the skull, the part that has much of its complexity, is the part that supports our two oval brain inside the neurocranium, what I call the floor of the neurocranium or the base of the skull. And the way to think about this, to make it simple, at least initially, is that there are three bones, the ethmoid, sphenoid, and temporal bone, the ethmoid, the most anterior one, the sphenoid, the one that's in the middle, and the temporal bone more posteriorly. The complexity here is due to the fact that all of the cranial nerves that come off of the brain, as well as the blood vessels that provide blood to and from the brain, pass through this base of the neurocranium, giving it a very convoluted look and with a lot of holes in it when you look at the actual skull. But we can organize it so simply if we just think front to back, the three main special senses that are found here, smell most anteriorly, vision a little bit more posterior in the mid region and hearing at the posterior part and we associate them with those three bones the ethmoid bone associated with smell having cranial nerve one the olfactory nerve coming off the brain going into the nasal region through it the sphenoid in the mid region associated with vision having the optic nerve as well as the three eye muscle nerves cranial nerves three four and six going through that sphenoid bone into the orbit uh, to the to the eye and then more posteriorly the temporal bone associated with the ear and hearing having cranial nerve eight 
or what I sometimes say, three with a V, so I can put it as one, two, and three with a V, or cranial nerve eight, the vestibulocochlear nerve coming off of the brain into the temporal bone where the entire hearing apparatus is located. So I hope that gives you a nice overview of the skull, that two oval look from the side with the cerebrum and the cerebellum protected by the big rounded plate-like bones of the neurocranium, the big dome of the skull, the face hanging up the front, bearing the middle teeth, posteriorly the middle ear cavity with those three middle tiny middle ear ossicles located behind the eardrum. Of course, the throat skeleton with the hyoid, the larynx and the trachea coming off of it. And then that complex base of the skull that for now we're gonna understand as the ethmoid, sphenoid and temporal bones associated with smell, vision, and hearing. That's the two oval skull, and that's the big picture anatomy for today.